The FBI's most wanted list is the ultimate showcase of real life intrigue and criminal prowess. It's a captivating gallery of individuals whose crime-based escapades have left an indelible mark on society somewhere. Each name on this list represents a puzzle waiting to be solved, a tale yearning to be unraveled. From cunning masterminds to audacious fugitives, these outlaws epitomize the dark side of human nature. The Most Wanted list serves as a constant reminder that the long arm of the law never rests. Its existence sparks public fascination, fueling our collective curiosity about the more dangerous corners of society. Every addition to the list carries a story of audacity, mystery, and danger. As their faces flash across our screens, we become amateur detectives drawn into the captivating world of crime and punishment. Today, we have some of those women who have made it onto the list. Their cases show the complex variety of crimes and how they've stood the test of time. Here are 20 Most Wanted Women in the World. Number 20. Virginia Vallejo Virginia Vallejo is a Colombian journalist, author, and television personality who gained international attention for her relationship with notorious drug lord Pablo Escobar. Born in 1949, she started her career as a journalist and news anchor, eventually becoming a prominent figure in Colombian media during the 1980s. Her life would take a dramatic turn when she began a romantic relationship with Pablo Escobar. Escobar was a notorious Colombian drug lord and leader of the Medellin cartel. He rose to power during the 1970s and 80s, becoming one of the wealthiest and most powerful criminals in history. Known for his ruthless tactics, he was involved in drug trafficking, violence, and corruption, and his illicit activities had a significant impact on Colombian society, leading to widespread violence and instability. Escobar's reign eventually ended in 1993 when he would be killed by Colombian authorities. His life and criminal empire continued to captivate the public's fascination and is often depicted in popular culture. Vallejo's relationship with Escobar lasted from 1983 to 1987, and during that time, she would be exposed to the inner workings of Escobar's drug empire, witnessing the violence and corruption that came with it. After ending her relationship, she became a key witness in the Colombian government's investigations into the drug lord's activities and provided testimony that helped to shed light on the extent of his criminal operations and his connections to influential figures. In 2006, she would release a memoir titled Loving Pablo, Hating Escobar, which detailed her experiences and provided a personal account of her time with the man. The book became an international bestseller and would later be adapted into a film starring Penelope Cruz and Javier Bardem. Her story highlights the complex and often dangerous dynamics that are associated with high-profile relationships and the repercussions of getting involved with individuals involved in criminal activity. Her first-hand account and bravery in speaking out against Escobar's criminal empire have contributed to a better understanding of the dark side of the drug trade and its impact on society. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Ruya Ignatova, the Crypto Queen As founder of what is known as one of the biggest scams in history, Ruya Ignatova is not only a bad person, but she also might be an evil genius. This Bulgarian-born German has been accused of multiple counts of fraud for her scheme that involved the creation of a fake cryptocurrency, which was called OneCoin. And despite her infamy and highly publicized criminal activity, she's actually been on the run since 2017. She is on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted list and has been there since June of 2022, and she's been pushed across the globe by many different international law enforcement agencies, but somehow has continued to evade capture. Having a huge wad of cash probably helps with disappearing into the ether, I would imagine. There's a top tip for all of you would-be international fugitives. Just make sure that whatever crime you do makes you a massive pile of cash, so you can hide forevermore in the loving and cash-welcoming embrace of the global criminal underworld. But, you know, <laughs> don't quote me on that, because I'm not partaking in your crimes, and I'm not going to be held accountable for your legal activities. All right, very good, let's move swiftly on. Number 18. 
Shanika Minor Shanika S. Minor, an American criminal, gained notoriety for her involvement in a tragic crime where she shot and killed a pregnant woman. This heinous action led to her inclusion on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list, and in June of 2016, her name would be added to the list for her alleged crimes of first-degree intentional homicide, first-degree intentional homicide of an unborn child, and unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. This would mark her as the 10th female to ever be placed on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. Number 17. Brenda Delgado Brenda Delgado made it onto this list of notorious female criminals by way of plotting and executing murder in 2015. Her victim was to be Kendra Hatcher, who had the misfortune to be the new girlfriend of Brenda's ex, and she was not going to let that go so lightly. Honestly, it sounds super twisted to begin with, but the elaborate scheme that she had hatched made it even more awful. After she broke up with Ricardo, known as Ricky, she then became completely obsessive. When Ricky began dating Kendra Hatcher, Delgado started to stalk them both, and the stalking turned murderous when she decided to plot the death of Kendra. And so she hired a hitman to murder the poor girl. Hatcher would be followed to the garage of her apartment building in Dallas by the hitman, named Christopher Love, where he shot her dead. Brenda was first connected to the killing when a black Jeep that she had borrowed from a friend had been seen in CCTV footage from the crime scene. After going on the run in Mexico, she was eventually caught by investigators and sentenced to life in prison. Her co-conspirators, the hitman and the getaway driver, were both sentenced to death and 35 years respectively. Number 16. Shantae Henderson Back in 2007, Shantae Henderson found herself placed on the FBI's most wanted list. This is not a good place to be, and in general, as we have seen, although not always, people on this list have done some extremely heinous stuff. Henderson had shot and killed DeAndre Parker in September of 2006 in Kansas City, Missouri. She had said that Parker had been in the process of attempting to run her over with a truck at the time. She would be placed on the most wanted list in March of 2007 and was actually apprehended that very same day after having spent months on the run. The judge in the court case had then acquitted Henderson of murder, but she was found guilty of manslaughter and placed on parole but later pulled over and found in possession of narcotics and a firearm, both of which are against the conditions of her sentence, and she would then be put in prison for 17 years. Her story just goes to show you that some people never learn, but you know what you can learn? You can learn how to click the subscribe button so that you get more great videos like this one in the future. Also, leave a thumbs up on this video, or a hitman might come and break your thumb off. Number 15. Donna Jean Wilmot Donna Jean Wilmot was put on the FBI's most wanted list all the way back in 1987, she would be indicted along with her partner Claude Daniel Marks in 1986 for her part in the elaborate and complex plot to blow up a maximum security prison in Kansas. This scheme had been part of a wider plan to create chaos at the prison so as to exploit the situation and land a helicopter to attempt to break out the leader of a Puerto Rican nationalist group called the FALN. The pair would then go on the run for many years until eventually surrendering in December of 1994. It transpired that they had actually been living in Chicago under the false identities of Joe Elliott and Greg Peters. Number 14. Catherine Ann Power Born in 1949, Power became involved in political activism during the turbulent 1960s and early 1970s. She was a member of the radical organization known as the Weather Underground, which would be involved in protests against the Vietnam War and advocated for revolutionary change. Power's involvement in activism took a rather dramatic turn in 1970 when she participated in an armed robbery of a bank in Brighton, Massachusetts. That robbery would result in the death of a police officer, and then she would go into hiding, becoming one of the most wanted fugitives in the United States. For over a decade, she had lived underground, assuming various identities and evading capture. However, in 1993, she actually turned herself in and accepted responsibility for her actions. Power would then be sentenced to prison, but were released on parole in 1999 after having served six years. 
Since her release, she's been an advocate for social justice and has spoken publicly about her experiences and the lessons that she's learned. She's worked with organizations that are focused on criminal justice reform, human rights, and nonviolence, sharing her story as a cautionary tale and promoting dialogue about the complex issues of political activism and violence. Catherine Ann Power's life and actions represent a controversial yet complicated chapter in American history. Her journey from radical activist to fugitive and then later to reintegration in society provides insights into the motivations and consequences of extreme political action. Number 13. Susan Edith Sachs Susan Edith Sachs would be placed on the FBI's most wanted list on October 17th of 1970 for the same robbery as Catherine and Power. They were both members of the Weather Underground. Unlike her roommate, however, she was actually caught in 1975 and remained on the list for the full five years. Also a student at a local university, she was a young radical who had escaped from a bank robbery along with Catherine M. Power, Stanley Ray Bond, and two ex-convicts by the names of Robert Valeri and William Gilday. It was Gilday who had shot and killed a police officer during that escape. Sachs then went on the run for the next five years until she was eventually caught in Philadelphia. The FBI had issued a photograph of her, and she was immediately recognized, being arrested that very same day. She then went on to trial and ended up serving seven years in prison. Number 12. Marie Dean Arrington Back in 1969, Marie Dean Arrington became only the second woman to ever be placed on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. Arrington had been sentenced to death for the murder of Vivian Ritter, who was a legal secretary for the public defender who had represented Arrington's children in a case. The public defender had been unsuccessful in their representation of the two on felony charges, and Arrington had seemingly sought revenge. She had been placed in prison while awaiting her execution, but had managed to escape by cutting a screen window and getting out while wearing pajamas. This is when she made it onto the list, and after finally being caught again in 1972, she would be given a further 10 years on her sentence, and her death sentence was commuted to life in prison. She died aged 80 years old in 2014 in the very same correctional facility from which she had escaped all those years before. Number 11. Three Women Robbed a Bank Back in 2011, three women would be accused of robbing a bank in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. One of those women worked at the branch of the TCF Bank in Milwaukee when she and two other women had hatched a plan to rob the place. In fact, it was actually quite a good plan, and they were getting away with it until one of them made a big mistake. Alexandra Lay was at work in the bank when her friends, Shaniqua Yancey and Tiara Macklin, along with Lay, had robbed the bank, getting away with $100,000. Yancey walked into the bank dressed in black, announcing that it was a holdup, and it turns out that Lay had told her friend how to avoid the security measures at the bank, and she had taken all the bundles of cash except for the one that would set off an alarm. Macklin waited outside and drove the getaway car, and this inside job would help the woman to get away with the crime for almost a month, but then one of them was silly and began to brag about it, and that was when the police were able to put things together and all of the women would be arrested. Number 10. Asata Shakur Asata Shakur, born Joanne Deborah Byron, then married to take the name Chesimard, is an American activist and was a member of the Black Panther Party and the Black Liberation Army. In the 1970s, Shakur spent time in various prisons. However, in 1979, she managed to escape and became a fugitive. After evading authorities for several years, she sought refuge in Cuba and, in 1984, would be granted political asylum. Ever since then, she's been residing there. Her status changed in May of 2005, when the FBI labeled her as a domestic terrorist and offered a substantial reward of $1 million for any information leading to her capture. Later on that same date in 2013, she became the first woman to be included in the most wanted terrorist list by the FBI. I think that probably helped them to, to survive, to, to stay alive. This would prompt the New Jersey Attorney General to match the FBI's reward, resulting in a total of $2 million for her apprehension. 
In June of 2017, then-President Donald Trump made a speech regarding the change in the United States' Cuba policy, where he emphasized the need for the release of political prisoners and the return of fugitives from justice as a condition for a new deal. Notably, he specifically mentioned the desire to have Joanne Chesmard, whom he referred to as the cop killer, returned. Number 9. Bernadine Dorn We've already seen one member of the Weather Underground in today's list of Most Wanted Women, and next up we have another, so let's have a slightly closer look at the group in which they were both involved and which led to their notoriety. The Weather Underground was a radical left-wing organization that was active in the United States during the late 1960s and 1970s. Emerging from the broader anti-war and civil rights movements, the Weather Underground sought to wage a violent revolution against what they had perceived to be an oppressive American government. The group primarily targeted symbols of state power, such as government buildings and banks, through bombings and acts of sabotage. The Weather Underground's members believed in the necessity of armed struggle to bring about a revolution and were inspired by the revolutionary movements around the world. They criticized the mainstream anti-war movement for what they saw as its failure to achieve meaningful change. The organization would disband in the late 1970s, with many of its members surrendering or going into hiding. And although their actions were controversial and met with widespread condemnation, the Weather Underground's legacy continues to spark debate about the role of political violence in social change and the limits of dissent. Bernadine Dorn was actually one of the leaders of the Weather Underground. She was charged with conspiracy in the bombing plot in Michigan and was a fugitive until 1980. At that point, when she surrendered, a judge had already dismissed many of the charges against her. She served a year in prison for what remained and then became a lawyer in Chicago. She then went on to found the Children and Family Justice Center at Northwestern University. Number 8. Angela Yvonne Davis Angela Yvonne Davis is a prominent figure in the fields of activism, academia, and social justice. Born in 1944, Davis rose to prominence during the Civil Rights Movement and became known for her tireless advocacy for racial equality, prison abolition, and gender justice. Davis's work as an educator and scholar has been influential in highlighting the intersectionality of race, class, and gender in systems of oppression. She's held teaching positions at prestigious universities and has authored numerous books that critically examine the criminal justice system, racism, and feminism. In the past, though, it would be Davis's political activism that made her a household name. In the early 1970s, she had faced criminal charges related to her alleged involvement in a high-profile courtroom incident. The case had attracted international attention, sparking widespread support for her cause. Davis's activism and advocacy have consistently centered on issues of social justice. She's been a vocal critic of mass incarceration and has campaigned for the rights of prisoners. Her work is also focused on challenging systemic racism and addressing the intersections of various oppressions within society. Throughout her life, Angela Davis has remained committed to fighting for a more just and equitable world. Her contributions to civil rights, feminist theory, and prison abolitionism have made a lasting impact inspiring generations of activists and scholars to continue the ongoing struggle for justice and equality. Number 7. Ruth Eisman Scheer Ruth Eisman Scheer was born in Honduras, the daughter of an Austrian Jewish refugee who had sought refuge there after escaping from Nazi persecution. She completed her undergraduate studies at the National University of Mexico, pursuing further education as a graduate student at the Institute of Marine Science, University of Miami, where she crossed paths with Gary Stephen Christ. In 1968, she became involved in a kidnapping for ransom scheme that was orchestrated by her boyfriend Christ, targeting the heiress Barbara Jane Mackle. This action would lead to her addition to the list of most wanted criminals, and while Christ would be apprehended within two days, Shear had managed to evade capture for 79. Eventually, she would be arrested in Norman, Oklahoma in March of 1969. 
Following her arrest, she was then extradited from Oklahoma to Georgia in order to stand trial, and that's where she pleaded guilty to her charges, receiving a prison sentence of seven years. During that imprisonment, Jean Miller collaborated with Mackle to write about the crime, chronicling it in the book titled 83 Hours Till Dawn. Shear served four years of her sentence before being granted parole in 1973 under the condition that she be deported to her native Honduras. Number 6. Julianne Dimitrion Julianne Dimitrion and her husband John Dimitrion became the subject of a manhunt for their involvement in a bunch of different white-collar crimes. Indicted on mortgage fraud charges in February of 2010, they admitted guilt in operating a fraudulent real estate scheme. Their deceptive activities involved exploiting distressed homeowners by promising to invest their money, but instead using it to support their lavish lifestyle. The FBI would discover that Julianne's extravagant expenditures included a whole lot of fancy schmancy clothing, high-end lingerie, designer handbags, and expensive footwear. According to the FBI, the last known sighting of the couple was at a church in Oahu in July of 2010, and when they failed to appear for their scheduled sentencing, warrants were then issued, initiating a search for them. Perhaps they should have gotten Dog the Bounty Hunter out on this one. It seems that the couple had abandoned their vehicle, and there's no record of their presence on any commercial flights. Authorities have offered a reward of up to $10,000 for any information leading to their arrest. Number 5. Eva Zamnikova Back in 2015, the courts in Slovakia would sentence Czech businesswoman Eva Z to prison for nine years for her role in planning to murder her husband. It was alleged that Eva had plotted to kill her husband with the help of a friend, offering him 50,000 euros for the hit. This friend, only known as Martin, then reported it to the police and became the chief witness against her. At that point, Eva had been married for only two months her plan was believed to be that she was going to have her husband killed, and then he would be missing as the intention was for the body to never be discovered. After two years, she would have him declared dead so that she could have all of his assets. She pleaded not guilty, and her defense was, by the time that she had paid off the hitman, she would have only gained about 30,000 euros. This, she said, was not enough money to justify the killing. She claimed that Martin or her husband had actually been conspiring against her. Number 4. Andrea Dudla Andrea Dudla, who was convicted and under investigation in Hungary for crimes including document forgery, money laundering, fraud, and deceit, had been evading justice for over a decade. She would be listed as one of the most wanted fugitives in Europe. However, her long history of eluding the authorities came to an end when she was arrested at the airport in Madrid, Spain. A joint investigation conducted by Spain and the Dominican Republic would successfully locate her in the DR, after which she had been deported. During her time in the DR, Dudla had assumed the false identity of Esther Cathona and lived a seemingly mellow and ordinary life in the municipal area of Punta Cana. In her life of criming, she had specialized in banking relations and credit fraud and had managed to vanish completely without a trace from her home country of Hungary in 2012. Alongside two accomplices, she had illegally obtained over 2 million euros. To legitimize the origin of this money, the criminal group established multiple shell companies. But in the end, it all came tumbling down for her. In March of 2023, Dudla, who had been on the run for a decade, was finally apprehended. Number 3. Rosita Vilce Rosita Vilce was a Peruvian real estate criminal entrepreneur who was finally sentenced for her crimes in 2015. Her criminal career had spanned the previous decade and had done untold damages to hundreds of people's lives. In September of 2012, she would be charged in federal court with bank fraud. She was then extradited to the United States in June of 2015, and she pled guilty to leading a wide-ranging mortgage fraud conspiracy that targeted hundreds of victims in the Northern Virginia Hispanic community. The mortgage fraud scheme, which operated between August of 2005 and 2007, generated nearly $7.4 million in fraudulent proceeds, causing losses of more than $15 million to lenders, most of which who were federally insured. This is the real reason that her case was taken so seriously. You know that people who screw over ordinary folks don't usually feel the strong hand of justice, not unless they mess with the ones with the big bucks like the banks. 
Vilce pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit bank fraud and wire fraud, affecting a financial institution. According to court documents, Vilce operated a real estate firm, a title insurance company, and the branch of a loan brokerage business in Manassas, Virginia, all of which she used to carry out the fraudulent scheme. Vilce and her co-conspirators submitted fraudulent loan documents that falsified their real estate clients' income, employment, and assets so that they could obtain loans to buy property through Vilce & Associates, which had received commissions of as much as 6% of the selling price of every home. The Vilce conspiracy targeted Hispanic clients who were not proficient in spoken or written English, and the borrower often were unable to even read their own loan documents, unaware of the false statements being submitted to the lenders on their behalf. According to court filings, the fraudulent loan applications made it possible for the borrowers to qualify for loans that they could never afford to repay. Most of these borrowers later lost their homes to foreclosure. Vilce faced a maximum penalty of 30 years in prison when she would be sentenced in December of 2015. Number 2. Hazel Leota Head In August of 1998, a woman named Deanna Ray placed a misleading ad in a Louisiana newspaper seeking a lonely man to exploit. She targeted Charles Barker, a retired trucker who had recently lost his wife and received an insurance settlement. She then moved in with Charles, but his daughter Jennifer quickly realized her true intentions. Eventually, Charles also recognized Deanna's motives. However, when he expressed his concerns to his daughter, Cindy, she mysteriously vanished, cutting off contact with the family. Worried, Jennifer would then ask her aunt to check in on Charles, only to discover his lifeless body with a gunshot wound to the head. Deanna, along with Charles's cash and car, were nowhere to be found. Investigations would reveal Deanna's true identity as Hazel Leota Head, a serial con artist with a history of aliases and criminal activities. She had a warrant for her arrest in Nebraska for arson, and after the murder, she had managed to evade capture with the last confirmed sighting occurring in December of 1998 in Colorado. Hazel Leota Head, born December 10th of 1949, still remains at large. She's in her 70s with blonde hair, green eyes, and distinctive features, such as a scar near her right eye and a gap between her front teeth. Head is known to frequent truck stops, relying on hitchhiking for transportation. Number 1. Amparo Altagracia Montes Hernandez Amparo Altagracia Montes Hernandez, also known as Iris, along with her son Eddie Vasquez, have found themselves on the wanted list and are being sought by authorities for charges of harboring illegal immigrants and unlawfully fleeing to evade prosecution. The allegations against Hernandez involve the operation of brothels in southwest Florida, where she's accused of exploiting illegal immigrants from Latin America. These individuals were forced into prostitution to repay debts that were owed to human smugglers who facilitated their entry into the United States, as stated by the FBI. These exploitative a-holes are disgusting human traffickers and deserved a rotten prison for the misery that they've caused. Following their indictment in August of 2005, Hernandez and her son then fled, prompting the issuance of arrest warrants. They're of Dominican descent and also have connections to the New York and Boston areas. Well, that was a real mixed bag of genuine criminal monsters and also some important and admirable social activists. It just goes to show that many high-profile crimes can be hugely political and attitudes can change over time. Which of these most wanted women was the most intriguing to you? And who else should be on the list? As always, you can let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.